Welcome to the installation guide for Therma VR290 air-to-water heat pump system by LG. This guide will cover crucial installation steps to ensure its optimal performance. We chose this product because it is one of the best performing in the market with an exceptional efficiency, one of the quietest as well, blending seamlessly with any environment. Before we start the installation, it is very important to consider the safety zone. As you might know, the R290 refrigerant is flammable. Make sure there are no openings like windows or doors, no external air outlets, avoid building boundaries, roads, and drainage inlets. Most importantly, no open flames or ignition sources. As you see here, we have a safe installation because there are no such potential ignition sources and no openings to the building within the safety zone as defined in the manual. For the installation, we would need a screwdriver, an electrical multimeter, an electric drill, a measuring tape, a knife, a leak detector suitable for the R290 refrigerant, a whole core drill, a horizontal meter, a spanner, pliers, and a fire extinguisher. Another thing to consider, the foundation and drainage for the outdoor unit should be prepared well before the actual installation. Make sure the foundation is higher than the average height of local snowfalls and ensure frost-free drainage of the condensate water. You also need to make the drilling through the building's walls in advance. Don't forget to use a leak detector both before and right after unpacking the unit. Make sure that all parts are supplied. Let's start our installation. Carry the unit to the designated place using the sling belts provided with the unit. Secure the unit using foundation bolts. You will need six sets of M12 foundation bolts, nuts, and washers. Screw in the foundation bolts until their length is 20 millimeters from the foundation surface. This ensures a secure and stable foundation for the heat pump. Now let's get started with the installation of the indoor unit. It should be placed in a room that provides easy access to both the outdoor unit and the heating system. Make sure you respect the minimum space requirements for service to avoid issues with air circulation and overheating. Choose a location with a water-resistant floor and access to the house's drainage system. Ensure there are no flammable materials nearby and take precautions against rodents like mice entering the unit and damaging wires. Now that we've covered the basics, let's mount the indoor unit. Step 1. Place the indoor unit horizontally on a stable base. Remove the remote control case by using a flat blade screwdriver from the front panel and disconnect its cable. Step 2. Now release the five screws and detach the front cover from the indoor unit. Grab it and pull it upward. Step 3. Attach the installation sheet to the wall. This sheet will help you mark the location of bolts. This installation sheet is included between the styrofoam and the indoor unit box. Just a quick tip, ensure the sheet is level. Otherwise, the supporting plate and the indoor unit won't be mounted correctly. Mark the location of the bolts on the wall using the guide provided by the installation sheet. After marking, detach the installation sheet and screw bolts into the holes you've marked on the wall. Use M8 to M11 anchor bolts. Step 4. Finally, hang the indoor unit on the supporting plate. Ensure it's securely in place and you're good to go. After outdoor and indoor unit are mounted, additional hydraulic components like domestic hot water tank or buffer tank must be positioned next to the indoor unit. The size of the domestic hot water tank must be dimensioned according to the desired consumption. The installation of a buffer tank might be necessary to ensure the minimum flow rate as given in the installation manual. 
core hole through outside wall must be prepared in advance. Be cautious when cutting or welding pipes, ensuring no defects occur and no particles remain in the pipes. Drainage provisions must be made for a safety valve operation and condensing discharge. When connecting water pipes, ensure tight fittings and use appropriate sealing methods. Connect the drain hose. Let's start with water pipe installation at the outdoor unit. The pipes are prepared for backwards connection. Make sure that the outdoor unit piping is protected from freezing or add an antifreeze like glycol with the mixing ratio as specified in the manual. Make sure there is no trap in the pipeworks. Keep a 15 cm clearance from the ground to prevent ice blockages. Maintain a distance of at least 10 cm between the antifreeze valves and ensure they're free from insulation for optimal function. Additionally, the strainer provided with the outdoor unit must be installed at the inlet of the outdoor unit to prevent particles clogging the plate heat exchanger. To protect the plate heat exchanger, please ensure the installation of a magnetic filter on the path of the return flow. Remember when using antifreeze valves, avoid setting a minimum cooling point below 7 degrees to prevent unintended valve openings. Before proceeding, make sure you have a dedicated power source for the air-to-water heat pump. Install an individual circuit breaker switch between the power source and each of the main electrical consumers. Confirm the power source specifications, including phase, voltage and frequency. The installation must be protected by an earth leakage circuit breaker. Make sure that all power and communication cables have the correct dimensions and the circuit breakers are sized according to the technical standards. Now let's go through the electrical connections at the outdoor unit. Follow these steps to ensure a safe and proper installation. Before it, to be sure that there are no leakages of the R290 refrigerant, don't use an electrical screwdriver. Make sure to keep your mobile phone away and respect all safety measures according to the manual. Step 1. Carefully disassemble the side panel and the cover of the control box from the outdoor unit. Step 2. Connect the power cable to the main power terminal. Ensure that the earth cable is connected at the dedicated terminal. Step 3. Use cable clamps or cord clamps to prevent any unintended movement of the power cable. Be cautious not to over-tighten the terminal screws as it may break them. Always use round pressure terminals for connections to the power terminal block. If unavailable, follow these schemes. Ensure the power cable doesn't touch the copper tube and fix the cord clamp firmly to sustain the connection of the terminal. Step 4. Connect the communication wire between outdoor and indoor unit, use a shielded cable and make sure the dedicated cable conduit is used, separate from power supply cable. Step 5. Reassemble the side panel and cover to the outdoor unit by fastening the screws securely. Now let's move on to the electrical connections at the indoor unit. You'll find two holes here. Hole A is for extra low voltage and sensor cables and hole B is for power cables. Make sure to keep the power lines separate from communication lines. Connect the communication cable from the outdoor unit to the dedicated terminal block at the indoor unit. The polarity must be respected. The indoor unit requires separate power cables for the main power supply, the backup heater and, if applicable, the hot water boost heater. Water charging is next. Open all valves in the water circuit and connect supply water. Open the caps of the air vents at indoor and outdoor unit. We need to purge any air inside the water circuit. Hold water supply when the control panel pressure gauge reaches the preset value. Monitor the pressure on the remote control for alignment. If all is good, move on to checking that pipe insulation. If in doubt, refer to the table on the screen. The indoor unit is equipped with an 8-litre lateral expansion vessel. 
check if the capacity is enough for the actual water volume used. If not, install an additional expansion vessel for the system. Check the pre-pressure of the vessel and adjust if necessary by using nitrogen gas. Various accessories such as valves, external pumps or sensors can be connected to the indoor unit. Refer to the installation manual or individual schematic for details. Commissioning starts with the dip switch settings. Before doing so, turn off the power. Make sure that the settings match the actual installation. Refer to descriptions in the manual. And there you have it. Your Therma VR290 unit is ready to be used.